Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Module 2, Lesson 1. Why move things around? Hmm, good question. Classwork Exploratory Challenge. A. Describe intuitively what kind of transformation is required to move the figure on the left to each of the figures 1 through 3 on the right. To help with this exercise, use a transparency to copy the figure on the left. Note, begin by moving the left figure to each location in one, two, and three. So rather than using a transparency, obviously I can't do that in my video, but I do have the technology to copy this down. So just give me a moment here and I am going to just trace this original drawing as best as I can. Okay, almost done here. Just want to shade this in a little bit. So really what I've just done is copied the original drawing that they asked us to copy. You would do it on your transparency. I just did it right here. Okay, so there, I copied it. So now what it's saying is move that, trans that copy over. And what just happened there? So the answer to this question is a translation or shift. You just shifted it up and over. So let me go back to my arrow here. Delete that. Okay, so then now I'm going to go back to here. So all that was was a shift over to here, and it landed right on top of one. So it was just a shift. So now I'm going to go from one to two. And when I do that, I get here. Well, obviously this is down here and it needs to be up here. So what could I do? Well, I could click on it and I could rotate it and then move it again. And then I look at that and I'm like, hmm, uh-oh. I just rotated it and it's still not right. But I could also do this. I could also flip it left to right and now when I do that then when I move this over here boom it is right on top of itself so this one I shifted it I had to shift it from here to here so it was a shift but then that made this down here so then I had to rotate it and then flip horizontally or left to right. All right, but if I rotate and flip left to right, now let me go through this process again. I'll bring this back over here and I will flip it back and rotate it back to the way it was. Okay, so there we are. Now, if I brought this over here, maybe I could just do one step. So maybe if I had this imaginary line somewhere here and I reflect it over that, let's see if that will do it. So let's flip it. So if I click here, now let's try flipping it up down. Oh, look at that. So I could either shift it, rotate it, and flip left, right, or simply shift and flip up, down. So just two steps for this part. So these two things gave me the same result. How interesting is that? Okay. So that was a shift, rotate, and a flip left, right, or just simply a shift and a flip up, down. So I'm going to flip this thing back and move it back to where it was. There's my original. And now we're going to do number three, and I'll do that one in purple. So if I move this over here to here, we're almost there. All I need to do now is rotate it. And we'll get into detail as to what kind of rotation that is. 
how many degrees, what direction, but for now let's just talk about what it's called. So this was a shift and rotation. Okay, so in order to bring it back to where it was, then I am going to have to bring that back and then rotate it. Bring it back. Okay, so this was just a shift. This was a shift and a flip up down for the shortest or least amount of work. And this was a shift and a rotation. Okay. So that's what we're doing in this lesson. We are moving things around. All right, so now part B says, given two segments, AB and CD, okay, and I could also name these with a line over top without arrows, which could be very far apart. So in other words, AB could be um, miles and miles apart. A and B could be two stars in the galaxy, and C and D could be two other stars in the galaxy that are the same distance apart. Um, it says, how can we find out if they have the same length without measuring them individually? In individually? Okay, so I guess I could trace one. So again, if we're going to use that plastic, let me be more accurate here, make things a little neater. If I bring this down, I'm just using the straight edge. I'm not measuring. Okay. Some students might say, oh, I measured both of them to the same length. Well, that's not what we're trying to do here. Let me just copy the length as closely as possible of AB. Okay. So there's AB. I went a little bit over. So there's the length of AB. So what this is saying is, how do I know if A, B, and C, D are the same? Well, I could bring it over here and put it there, but now I have to rotate it. So now I'm going to rotate so that they're as close to parallel as possible, like so, and then move Okay. I want to move this. Why is that not grabbing it? Come on. Hello. All right, having a little bit of difficulty catching this. Okay, I will move this down here then. You want to be that way. And then I just need to rotate this just a smidgen to see that they are actually about the same length. Okay, it won't allow me to rotate the exact degree, but you can see that these two lengths are the same by copying it and moving. If you were to do this with a transparency, you'd be moving the transparency over there. Okay, so that's how you check. Copy the image, move the image over onto the other one, and that's how we moved it around the plane, and we should show that that actually is why that red line is stubborn. Anyhow, I'm not going to mess around with that any longer. I'm just going to move it back. So this is A, B, moved over to C, D. All right. And basically, that was about it in this, moving things around. So what a transformation F on of the plane is a function that assigns each point P of the plane to a point F of P in the plane. So not much was discussed other than moving things around in this lesson unless I went through more detail as to what the teacher's edition said, but this is read F of P, and it just means the image of P, where P was the pre-image, okay, the original. So let's read that again. A transformation F of the plane is a function that assigns to each point P of the plane a point F of P in that plane. Okay, so by in this homework problem set down here, as you can see, there's a segment AB, 
there's a segment f of a, f of b, which means that a, b is the original or the pre-image, and f of a, f of b is the copy or the image. And in order to get a, b over to f of a, f of b, we would have to shift it to the right. So here it says, by definition, the symbol f of p denotes a specific single point unambiguously. The point f of p will be called the image of p by f. Okay, the image meaning in the copy of P by F. Sometimes the image of P by F is denoted simply as P prime. That's red P prime. So I put this little mark up there. So I copied this over. I could have also called this A prime because it was A. Now it's a copy of A. B becomes a copy of B. The transformation F is sometimes said to move the point P to the point F of P. So how did I get A over to F of A or A prime? Shifted it to the right. We also say F maps P to F of P. Right? The F is the function, the movement. That is what the F stands for. That is a movement of A to, a, to, to the copy of A. In this module, we'll mostly be interested in transformations that are given by rules, that is, a set of step-by-step -step instructions that can be applied to any point P in the plane to get its image somewhere else. If given any two points P and Q, the distance between image F of P and F of Q will be the same as the distance between the original P and Q, like I showed you in the example. And then the transformation F preserves the distance, or is distance preserving, is what we call that. A distance preserving transformation is called a rigid motion or is or an isometry. And the name suggests that it moves the points on, of the plane around in a rigid fashion, meaning it does not rearrange its shape or size. Okay? So that is the end of lesson one. Go to your problem set.